Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking through how we make um, a pastry called jalousie. Uh, so it's a puff pastry with a fruit mixture in the centre. Um, and the reason it's called jalousie is because the word originally um, was used for French shutters, which had the slats through them. And you'll see as we go through and from the pictures in your recipe books that when the puff pastry is presented, we make slits in it so that it puffs up and reveals some of the filling inside and it, re it kind of looks like some of those old French shutters and that's how we call it jalousie. All right, so we're going to start um, by prepping our filling, which you the recipe calls for a Granny Smith apple and a pear. Unfortunately, I don't have a pear with me today, so I'm going to be using a Granny Smith and then also a red apple. And I'm actually going to be combining them together to create a little bit of a slightly sweet, slightly more subtle apple flavour on the inside. So we're going to start by peeling our apples and then cutting them into a small, roughly eight millimetre cube, which is what we call Macedoine. Um, so just small cubes, very finely cut up so that it cooks quickly. It also means that you're not getting huge chunks when you bite into the pastry. So we're going to peel our apples and then cut them up. All right, so now that we've peeled our apples, um, we don't want to have the core in our apple, obviously. So using a sharp knife very carefully and on a cutting board, we're going to cut down the side of the core. So we've got a flat, nice flat piece. I'm going to cut down the other side. So you make sure your fingers are nice and out of the way. You want to try and get as much of your apple as you can. So you should only have a small amount of your core left. If you have an apple core, you can do that as well. So it's just a little bit harder and not everyone has one. We we'll do the same to our red apple. All right, this one's a little bit unstable. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to turn it on its side and cut it, continue to cut it this way. So I've got a flat bottom so it's actually a little bit more stable and a little bit safer to cut. There we go. So the core goes in my waist bin. All right. And to do the massive one cut, what we're going to do is actually sell this bigger piece and I'm going to just make small slices. I want it to kind of stay, so I might do an archway with my hand and cut through the middle, keeping my fingers out of the way and cutting small little pieces. Eight millimetres is just under a centimetre. And you want to try and get them all to be as similar in size as possible. Um, and that's actually because then they cook through evenly. So you're not going to get one bit of apple that's super crunchy and one bit that is just falling to pieces. All right. So you can see with our little piece of apple there, it's very small. It's going to cook very quickly, which is going to be great. So we're going to cut up the rest of our apples so they all look the same and we're actually going to put it into our pot ready to go on the stove. Okay, so I have chopped up all my apple. If you are doing it with apple and a pear, then you need to have two pots. So you've got your apple in one and your pear in the other. In with our apple, we're going to be putting our cinnamon, our cardamom and our cloves mixture. So I've doubled mine because I've got two apples and that's going to go in here. But if you have apple and pear, you're going to have on your apples a quarter of a teaspoon of cinnamon, quarter of a teaspoon of cloves and quarter of a teaspoon of cardamom. That's going to go in with two tablespoons of hot water. So I've doubled mine and I'll add my two tablespoons of hot water because I'm doubling it. It's going to be four. All right, and then if you were doing the pear, what's going to go in there is a tablespoon, with your pear, there's two tea, tablespoons of hot water and a tablespoon of sugar. That's what's going to go in with your pear. So you've got your apple, which has a different um, spice, and your pears, which have sugar, but they both have two tablespoons of hot water. Then what we're going to do is 
put these on the stove on a medium to low heat and we're going to stir it just until all the spices blend together and also um, and your sugar melts if you're doing the pear and also till the fruit becomes a little bit soft so you're not looking for it to turn into a puree you're looking for it to turn into just staying its shape holding its little cubes but just a little bit softer you should be able to almost squish it with your wooden spoon so we're going to do that and then we'll be moving on to our pastry You want to make sure your spices are evenly covering the fruit that's in your pan. So if you've got your pears, you want to make sure the sugar and water is getting all around each piece of pear. And if you've got the apple, then you want to make sure it's getting a nice coating with the spice. Okay, now while that's uh, just sitting on the stove, I will need to stir it every now and then. You need to sit at the stove and continuously stir it. It can sit for a little bit, just give it a stir every couple of minutes. I'm gonna prep my puff pastry. So I have my frozen puff pastry, which I actually took out of the freezer uh, about half an hour before I was ready to cook so that it defrosted. You don't wanna be doing this with frozen puff pastry, it's just gonna break. So you want it to be nice and defrosted, very soft. And what we're going to be doing is actually cutting these into quarters. So I'm going to get a nine. Very careful. And we're going to cut our half, our full square, sorry, in half. And then we're going to turn it and we're going to cut those halves into halves again. So you're going to create quarters. You can hear my apples bubbling, so I'm going to turn those down a little bit. I'm going to stir. So you can see, cut our puff pastry into quarters. I'm going to do the same on this one. Okay. And then on half of the, so you can peel off four of your squares and put them onto a already lined baking tray. They're going to be our bases. Okay, so you should have all of your bases on your tray like that, evenly spread out. They're not going to spread like cookies would, so don't have to worry about them doing too far apart, but you do want them far enough apart that they've got some space because they are going to still pop up. All right, so you put those to the side, and then you should have your four squares left. So what we're going to do with these is this is where we're going to make our kind of shutter-looking uh, tops for our pastries. Make sure you're keeping an eye on your apples or at your pears, so they're still just sitting quite nicely. So what we're going to be doing with the tops is we're going to get our knife. We're going to very carefully run the knife through the center. You don't want to cut all the way through. You just want to create about a centimeter in from the edge, about a centimeter in from all edges four to five, depending on how big your square is. Slits through the pastry. I'm gonna do five, because it's a bit of a bigger square. All right, so we got to see. So you can see that I've created these little slits. They don't go through right through the edge, so they, it's all still one piece, but it's put these little holes through the center. So what will happen is when we put that over our pastry, you'll be able to see the filling pop through like that. So you want to do that again with all of your leftover pastry squares. Same thing, about a centimeter in from all edges for the first one, and then about a centimetre apart for every 
line after that one. Okay. So then you just, by the time you've uh, finished doing that, your fruit should be pretty close to being done. You could also get your fruit all ready to go and then do your puff pastry. It's not gonna matter if the fruit sits on the side. Well, excuse me for a second. Sorry about that. As I was saying, you could do your fruit first, your puff pastry after. It's not gonna matter if your fruit mixture sits on the side for a little bit or cools down. It's not, nothing's gonna to happen to it. It's gonna get warmed up again when you put it in the oven with the pastry. So you don't have to do it at the same time. Um, especially if you don't have anyone to help you, you can just focus on your fruit. And then once that's done, take it off the heat, set it to the side, do your puff pastry. I've done mine at the same time. So I'm just waiting for that to get nice and mushy and then we'll move on with the next step. Okay, so my fruit is ready. You can see that it is nicely coated in all the spices. It is warm enough that it's fogging up my glasses. There's still a little bit of liquid at the bottom, but it's nowhere near as runny as what it was when we first put it in. It's thickened up, it's almost like a sauce now. So what we're gonna do is move on to assembling our pastries. So we're gonna start with our bases. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually do an egg wash on the base. This is gonna help um, make it nice and crispy, but also it's gonna help attach the top to the bottom. So I've got in this jug, one egg and about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of milk. So with my basting brush or my pastry brush, I'm just gonna dip that in there, doesn't need to be heaps, and just brush that right around the outside of the square. So you wanna cover at least a couple of centimeters in from the edges because you wanna have a decent amount of space to actually press down the top onto. Especially when you're working with frozen puff pastry, it's really great to um, use an egg wash because it kind of gives it a little bit more moisture again. Whereas if you were making fresh, you would still want an egg wash to stick it together, but it's going to be nice and soft because it is fresh puff pastry. So we're going to repeat that on all four, just going around the corners, making sure there's a nice amount of egg on there. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're going to start to assemble our pastries. So I'm just going to get I'm going to use a soup spoon because it's got a nice big surface area. And you're going to get, you're going to divide up your mixture. So if you're doing apple and pear, you're going to have enough for two apple pastries and two pear pastries. So I'm just going to start putting a small amount of apple right in the center of my pastry. Now, if you have just pulled it off the stove, please be careful, it is gonna be hot. And especially if you're working with the pear and you've got sugar in there, sugar is very hot when it comes off the stove. So just be careful with your fingers. Okay, so as you can see, the Apple filling or the fruit filling, oh, I'm losing one there, is sitting in the middle of the squares. It is not going right to the edges. It's actually sitting quite a bit further in. That is because we need some space to press our edges down onto and you want to have a nice ridge around it and a bigger filling in the centre. So you can flatten it out a little bit, but you want to have a nice open edge. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take our, just going to move this out of the way. We're going to take our slatted tops of our pastry and we're going to very carefully so that they don't split, line it up over the top, just see which one sits better. And we're just going to very gently press the edges down. So I want to make sure they line up. Try and make them as neat as possible. 
This is where you can squish your filling down a little bit. So the egg wash acts almost like as a glue. Um, puff pastry will stick together on its own a little bit, but the egg wash just makes sure that it really sticks together. Okay, one thing that I'm going to do just to add a little bit of presentation element to it is I'm going to get a fork and I'm just going to lightly press down on the sides. This actually helps make sure it sticks together, but also just makes it look a little bit nice. I'm just going to go right around the edges. Okay. So that, oh, almost lost them there. That is what it's going to look like when you have assembled your jalousi. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for the rest of them, and then we'll come back. Okay, so they are now assembled and we're almost done. So to finish them off before they go in the oven, uh, at 200 degrees Celsius, we're going to take our egg wash again and we're just going to very lightly brush over the top. Now what this is going to do, because obviously it's already stuck together, this is going to mean that uh, when it heats up and it starts to cook, it's going to end up with a nice crispy golden finish. So we're going to do that lightly to the top of every single one. I'm going to drench it in egg, but you want to make sure it gets all over. And then last but not least, I've just got a little bit of extra caster sugar and I'm just going to sprinkle it over the top. Just a light coating. This will kind of melt in with the puff pastry as it bakes and it ends up with a nice sugary crispy bake, uh, crispy outside. Okay. So these are ready to go in the oven. They're going to go in at 200 degrees Celsius until they're nice. They've puffed up. They've gone um, nice and a light brown, golden, crispy color. And then you can pull them out, let them sit for a minute because that apple on the inside is going to be very hot and the pear as well is going to be very hot on the inside. And then you can dig in. It's great with ice cream, with cream, for dessert, make for your family. It's going to be great. All right, I'm going to put these in the oven.